All right, today I'm going to be looking at King of Glory Ministries. Uh, this is a YouTube channel and website run by one Lois Vogel Sharp, I believe. And uh, the reason I'm doing this, actually, is because we're instructed to. For those of you that follow Jesus Christ in truth and sincerity, the Word of God is our foundation. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 1, we read, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. We're instructed to do this. I read this to you all the time, but I read this also because I get those who come against me as though I'm doing some strange, cruel thing by exposing false prophets. So with that, let's get started. All right, so the objective here is to determine whether Lois Vogel Sharp is indeed an actual true prophetess of God. We're going to find that out today very easily. The comic relief that accompanies this video is <laughs> coincidental, I guess. I don't know, but it is pretty funny, so please stay tuned. Um, so right off the bat, uh, we're going to take a look at some things that we can see. Right here on her welcoming page, uh, welcoming video, you can see it's, uh, she's monetized. Here's an ad playing. Now, I'm not sure if she's fully monetized, but uh, nevertheless, here's an ad playing. And so we go to the About section, and we can see she's been around since 2014. She's reached almost 5 million people, 5 million views. That's, uh, as you'll see, is going to be a little bit disturbing. But she does have a website, so we're going to click on that. All right, so here's the website. A couple of things here. Um, when I go into the Who Are We, it's quite a lengthy uh, description of who are they and what they do. They talk about the vision, and so I'm going to highlight just one part here. Um, let me scroll up a little bit here. She talks about, uh, come and join us in a place of peace where we will live in the way they did in Acts. She goes on to describe that she's uh, building a safe haven, or a couple of safe havens, and uh, it becomes clear as you continue, we are looking for those who can financially back this ministry so we can purchase the land that is right behind our ministry home and has over 40 acres. Okay, so she needs money to purchase land. As you'll find out, she has since done that. But right away, I see that she's soliciting funds. It's always, always a red flag. If you go to the donations, again, I check these things because I need to know if these prophets of God are receiving Donations, and of course they are. There's your PayPal, use your credit card. Different methods of receiving income, simply give Bitcoin, Litecoin, and of course the trusty mail your check on in to the address here. So always disturbing. And again, I always argue, uh, what are they doing? Well, we, we know what they're doing, buying land. And we'll visit that a little bit more in just a second. But getting money for making YouTube videos. This has always been disturbing for me. You scroll down, she gives you a notification. All donated funds for the purpose of safe havens or places of refuge and or any other uses, projects, products, and for daily operations. Operations of what? Uh, are placed in the general fund of King of Glory's ministry. Um, so you can read this. It's, it's just nonsense. All right, so the first video clip that I'm going to show you, actually a couple of clips from this video. This was done on September 13th, 2020. Uh, it, here's the title, Prophecy, Trump Will Win. And I'm going to show you some things here, but more importantly, or even more interesting, is the contradiction uh, to which she speaks. So let's give it a listen. And we also pray, Father, that President Trump wins this election to keep your spirit in the White House. So she's saying a prayer right now, and she's praying, God, you know, let Trump, you know, we pray that Trump wins the election. This is her prayer. So why is that contradictory to the title? Well, you can see here she's prophesying Trump will win. Why is she praying, you know, hey, God, you know, can Trump win? It's contradictory, and you'll see even further. Here we go. Let me read, and then I'll Now she's going to read the prophecy. I have another vital word to tell my people. A heads up about the election. All hell will break loose when Trump wins. 
but I a heads up about the election. All hell will break loose when Trump wins. Is there any question? She said, or well, she's reading on her trusty notebook, you know, because all these prophetesses, they have notebooks where they write these things down. Uh, and certainly the effect is here. She stands in front of this beautiful South American waterfall. But she just prophesied that God told her that Trump is going to win. As we forward into the video, we're about eight minutes in, uh, here she'll again confirm it. That they're going to scream across America. You will see screaming again when he wins. President Trump is going to win because God is screaming again when he wins. President Trump is going to win because God has spoken it forth. Now, it's kind of funny that Lois, she's from New York, right? So she's got that New York accent going here. We're going we're gonna to talk a lot about this today. You know what I mean? But here she says, the Lord has spoken it forth. How utterly terrifying for this woman. She prophesied uh, title here and here three times that God says Trump is going to win. Uh, but even before that saying a prayer, you know, please, God, let Trump win. So contradictory, absolutely. False prophecy, unequivocally, yes. All right, the next video, I'm not going to play anything, but you can see the title. Uh, prophecy from uh, that she got on May 10th, Economic Collapse. She broadcast this on May 12th, economic collapse. She says it in the body of this, that there's going to be an economic collapse that occurs before the end of 2017. And again, to save time, I'm not going to play it. But you can certainly go watch this video yourself. Uh, easily a uh, confirmed false prophecy. In this video, uh, this is from August 13th of 2017, uh, this prophecy, this was uh, titled Last Warning, and again, I'm not going to play anything from this for the sake of time, but you can go watch it. She prophesied um, that on August 21st that the judgment of God would begin. Now, for those of you that don't know, this is about, well, the 21st was the day of the eclipse back then. And so she called for the judgment of God to begin on the 21st, as well as the uh, Revelation 12 prophecy. And, of course, none of this happened. And so we can put this, we'll put this on a list. I'll show you that in just a minute. Another false prophecy. All right, I'm going to play you some clips from a video she did back in 2017 also. And it's not so much about prophecy. She's going to be doing a little mumbling, a little complaining about people coming against her. She's going to try to justify that. So we'll comment as we go. So let's listen. I don't like to just jump in and give prophetic words or whatever, because I know people really, most people don't know how to take it. And um, just recently had somebody on Facebook come against me. Um, but I guess that's part of the course. I just want to say one thing. And this is something we all need to think about as the body of Christ. When are we going to stop pointing fingers? When are we going to stop condemning each other? Well, in her case, I think people will stop pointing fingers when she stops falsely prophesying. Uh, but again, she wants to vent her frustrations as though it was some common other reason. People randomly attacking her. No, she's falsely prophesying, and so people are coming against her. We are not in the mode of condemnation. We're supposed to be in love. If you disagree with me, if I disagree with you, which there's many of issues that we all disagree on, and the rapture is one of them. We all know there's three different theories about the rapture. We all have our theories, and we all believe we're right. We're not all right, okay? And we're not all right on everything we believe. None of us are right on everything we believe, because the Bible specifically tells us we see through the glass dimly, darkly. So right now she's taking 1 Corinthians 13 completely out of context. Uh, and again, I'll explain. She claims to be a prophet. If God is giving her the word directly, uh, she's not looking through any glass. She can't use that as an example of our lack of understanding. You get the word from God and you bring it to the people and it's prophecy. But if it's wrong, then you're a false prophet. So you can't use the excuse, hey, we don't get everything right all the time. No, no, no. 
that particular office does not fall into that category. Out of all the offices that are given in the in our uh, Bible, some are evangelists, some are pastors, some are faith healers, some are prophets. The office of the prophet is the only one where if you get it wrong, you get the death penalty, even according to Deuteronomy 18, verses 20 through 22. So her complaining here has no validity to it. And it's sad that she has to even do this. She still can't understand that what she's doing is an abomination in the eyes of God. So we don't get it all the time, right? So why do we have to point the fingers? Why can't we just love one another and discuss it, whatever? Why do we have to get nasty? <laughs> why do we have to get nasty? For crying out loud, I'm up here in New York. Uh, people get nasty because when you say you're a prophet and you falsely prophesy, they're going to come against you. They love Jesus, all right? And they can see that in the midst of your outright rebelling against God, uh, you deserve to be chastised publicly. Um, and again, it's not about love, all right? It's not about love. For crying out loud, this is a crime so egregious against the living God that he commanded death to whoever did it one time. You never know that in these end times because people don't care for the most part whether you're right or wrong. The ones who love Jesus care, but for the most part, the 18,000 subscribers that you have, they don't care. They're being entertained. And that's a sad testimony to the times we live in. All right, the next video we're going to look at, Prophecy Earthquake California. Uh, it was done, look at 40, 000, almost, well, actually 40,000 views. This was done September 2nd, 2017. Well, let's take a listen. And I, I got to warn you, this is kind of funny because uh, it's like your mother all of a sudden appeared on video. Listen to this. You are about to witness a major earthquake, and this is the last warning about this earthquake that my daughter Lois will give you. California, you are about to be cracked in two. <laughs> Does that sound like your mom or what? Tommy, get over here. Put that down. I'm going to crack your butt in two here. Right? You better listen to your mother. Um, I'm going to play this again because I want to point out some things here. Uh, so give this a listen. You are about to witness a major earthquake. And this is the last warning about this earthquake that my daughter Lois will give you. Notice how she refers to herself in the third person. Now this, whether you know it or not, is a tactic. It gives validity to the prophecy or the gullible and the simple-minded believe. Uh, and they think to themselves, wow, she, she referred to herself as my servant Lois, my daughter Lois. Uh, it must really be from God. And unfortunately, it works all too often. Uh, but let's continue. California, you are about to be cracked in two for your obstinance towards me and your total arrogance in regards to my word. It's blowing my mind. It's blowing her mind. Anyone who wants to be spared this sorrow needs to leave the area before destruction hits. Now, this is another terrifying aspect. She's prophesying this uh, California earthquake which is going to be so devastating that she's actually telling anybody listening to her that they need to leave the area. Now, this is absolutely terrifying because of the gullible who listen to these prophets. Uh, it causes people to actually sell their homes, sell their belongings, and leave, uproot their entire lives based on what this false prophetess has spoken. They think that this is really coming from God when, in fact, it was proven that it didn't happen because she prophesied that this was going to happen before the end of the year. You say this will not happen, yet I say this will. This will happen before the new, my new year begins. Is that terrifying? We saw this again with Harold Camping in 2011 when people were selling their belongings in their homes. Uh, and it's so troubling. This is cult mentality. And again, all for somebody who falsely prophesied. Absolutely ridiculous. All right, the next video, uh, we're going to look at some clips here from 2018, December 31st, well, the last day of the year. Uh, God says, I am angry. Mount Vesuvius is about to blow. And so we're going to listen to Lois as she goes here. Here we go. And I got this word at 3 o'clock this morning. I went to bed at 1. I woke up at 3, and I got this word. This is the most 
upsetting word I've ever gotten from God. It's always interesting how these prophetesses are always awakened. Three o'clock in the morning. Here's getting, I got this word at four in the morning. I was in prayer. It's very upsetting. And it's just, they're always awakened, right? It's amazing. And I could feel his wrath in what he's about, what he was telling me. And this is what started coming to me when I was laying there. Mount Vesuvius is about to blow. I got it twice and I was like, what? Is that my mind talking? What is that? Is that you, Father? To answer your question, yes, it is your mind. Now, whether it's from your own vain imaginations or whether it's from a familiar spirit who's speaking into your mind, uh, it's in your mind because clearly this didn't happen. And so uh, you never bothered to answer that question or confirm it because the video still remains up. Baba. And I, I went back to the father about it, and, he, and I was just laying there, and he said to me, you need to get up and write this down. And I knew, I, I could feel like a, a reverent fear of God and not messing with him. And I came back up here on the hill. It's a little windy. I didn't realize it was this windy, but I'm going to wing it up here. And I'm going to just read this. This is a warning, all right? because Mount Vesuvius is about to blow, and God's wrath, he's very upset. Something's going on right now that he's very disturbed about. <laughs> it's, uh, I think it's just hysterical. This is a warning. You better listen. God is very upset. He's very angry. Say, hey, sit down back there. I'm about to, I'm about to give you some God here. It's a warning. Let me just read it. Mount Vesuvius is about to blow, and many will be destroyed by the blast. Time to wake up and smell the roses, for my wrath is coming on this earth. And where will you be when it continues to blast from volcano to volcano? The earth will crack and split as the pressure from within is mounting. The earth as you know it will fall apart, and a new heaven and a new earth will come down. Until Good grief. Did this happen? Anybody? Did, did this happen under our noses? And we just didn't see it. So she, in essence, you can replay this, she said that not only was Mount Vesuvius going to blow, that it was going to spread from volcano to volcano. And in fact, the earth was going to split in two, even to the point where the new heaven and the new earth are coming down. Wow. Did this happen, anybody? This is, it's bananas. I'm not even sure she realizes what she said here. Now, this next part I'm going to play because it's, this is the comedy relief, but this, this woman is a character. And again, it just because she's, unintentionally funny doesn't take away from the actual crimes that she is committing here. But it also shows you the delusional mind uh, and the familiar spirits working through her right now at this time. So listen. Again, I have spoken, and you will surely see these words come to pass. Your father who art in heaven. And it's cold up here. I just wanted to read it from nature. Here it comes. <laughs> it's just kind of bananas. Hey, look out. I didn't know it was going to happen this soon. Here comes God. He was just at the Brooklyn Bridge. Now he's up here. Get ready. It's going to happen live on video here. It's just all bananas, isn't it? Now, the next video, you can see a special me message. It's about to happen. This is from uh, 2019. This is really what it always comes down to, and this is the filthy lucre of it. So now, if you actually could watch this video, she actually chastises you um, for not sending her your money, uh, among other things. So let's listen. We have a road that has to get put in. I just got the estimate of the road. It's about $40,000. And that's if we can get the own quarry uh, rubble that we need for the, for the foundation of the road on our own property. Otherwise, we'll have that added expense to it, too. We have to have the road so that we can get up there, back into the woods where we're going to be. So that's a $40,000 expense that's just out there, to, and it has to get done. These are things that need to get done. So those who have been blessed with finances can help financially. Those of you that have put it into your gold and your silver, there's no reason why you can't be using that. It's, it's money. If it's sent where it can be used, where the ministry can use it and turn it into finances when the time comes to do these things. Amen. So don't say you don't have the means to help because you do technically. 
And that's what the, the Father says in the Word, the gold and the silver are mine. He's going to use the gold and the silver. And somebody said to me, well, how come um, you're saying that these places should be built already? These places should have been built a long time ago, but nobody believes it. Very few believe that we're not getting out in a pre-trib rapture. All right, I'll stop it right there. What she's doing is she's soliciting money to build uh, what she calls safe havens. And it's uh, kind of a, an apocalyptic fort type back in the woods. And how dare you not send money? Don't make excuses. Uh, she's building this for you. In other words, she's going to reserve you a spot uh, for when this all starts to go down so we can all be safe in the woods. And again, uh, unscriptural, unbiblical. We're not told to do this. And so uh, I just, again, it speaks to the filthy lucre of it all. Uh, you're going to send her all this money, and when it all starts, you know, when the world starts to melt, you think they're going to let you into this place? Well, let me say it like her. You think you're going to get into this place? You think so? A little bit? Maybe a little bit? Not going to happen. All right, so if you've watched my videos, you know most of the time I uh, document all these things. King of Glory Ministries, a.k.a. Lois Vogel Sharp. Uh, number one, she falsely prophesied an economic collapse in 2017. Falsely prophesied August 21st, 2017 would be the official beginning of the judgment of God on earth, uh, Revelation 12. She falsely prophesied that California would get earthquake, uh, which would crack it in two. That was supposed to happen uh, before the beginning of 2018. Falsely prophesied an economic collapse for 2018. She falsely prophesied that Mount Vesuvius was about to blow, in addition to other volcanoes and just an all-around splitting of the entire earth. And six, the creme de la creme falsely prophesied that Trump would win November 3rd uh, at the election. Uh, this is six. Really, according to Holy Scripture, it only takes one, but here's six. So you're going to have to make up your own minds. How long do we continue to give heed to folly? Uh, Lois Vogel Sharp is unequivocally a false prophetess, uh, puts her in full rebellion against the living God. So with that, I'm going to close it out with this. Now, the last clip here that I'm going to play you, she says, is a poem that was written by the living God. It speaks to, I almost want to say, the mental deterioration of this woman. It's childish, it's immature, uh, but nevertheless, it is happening. She's gotten 639 thumbs up, uh, again, the ratio, almost 12,000 people watching this. It's shocking. And some of you might laugh, but this also is a testament to how easy people are deceived. It is cringe beyond the description of cringe. Listen. Listen to the words, because this, if you listen to the words, you, you're going to see what he's telling us right here, and it's absolutely unbelievable. It's all gone. The money I once had, it's all gone. But what have I done to deserve this fate? Did I start to pray too late? I woke up one day and I had to delay. I never took the time to even pray. Now my pension is lost forever and I'm left with this endeavor to fend for myself because I did not listen to any advice that was given by the prophets in the night. They spoke out loud day and night telling of this crash and warning of this plight. We did not believe it. We did not want to hear it. And yet it happened right in front of our face to our total disgrace. We were so caught up with making money, we even ignored the economists who said no good and plenty. They showed us over and over again that the economy was tipping on the fence. But we stood as tall as we could be ignoring every plea. We all fell off the fence, even Vice President Pence. Why did we not listen? when we were told the babies were all missing. We were too busy saving our cash, and now here's the crash. What a woe this truly is. Now I feel like I lost my missus. My, my spouse has left my house because she could not handle living with nothing but candles. She went home to mother, her sisters, and her brothers. They are living in harmony, for they listened to the warning about the economy. They saved up food, water, and silver so they would not quiver. They trusted in the Lord up above. They listened to his love. 
while the rest of us are in this mess. They live in peace and harmony because they were not just part of the economy. They trusted not in paper money that is worthless. We've been jerked by this. We've been jerked into looking around and facing this sound. The sound of crashing money. The sound of crying babies. The sound of those left with nothing because they just could not believe that God would punish us. They thought they could live anonymous. No one will see their sin. They all walked around with their grins. They lied. They cheated. Anyone they could, so they could. So they would prosper. They did not care. They even tried to impeach the president. How did they dare? God was watching every move they made, and now it's time to pay. We either listen to the truth. Our money has gone up in a poof. 